Hey guys, and welcome back to Review Right. Or if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. Today, we're going to be looking at another Nick Pro value set, which comes with three different pencils named the MP2000s. Last week, we looked at the MP1000s, which received a record low 4 out of 10 rating on this channel. So hopefully, we don't go lower um, in this video. It comes with 360 pieces of 0.5 millimeter lead, which is what each of these pencils accepts. It also includes three 4B erasers, which I'm not sure if those are good. I'm not an eraser connoisseur, but normally I just go with my Pentel High Polymer, which, I mean, it always works for me and it's pretty good quality. So it also comes with these. These are just replacements for the ones that already come with it, which are pretty small, but we'll talk more about that in the erasability category. As you can see, they're not very big and yeah. We'll put that back and start talking about the pencils. Now, obviously, I got these for free from the Nick Pro uh, representative that reached out to me. That will not affect my review at all. I mean, if anything, I really don't care that they sent it to me for free. It is nice of them to reach out, don't get me wrong, but it will not affect my review in any way, shape, or form. So if you want to buy these yourself, they're $19 for the whole value pack. We'll take away $2 for you know, all these, all these extras, and then that leaves us with 17. Now there's three pencils, so we'll divide, oh, okay, so the lead just broke. Um, we'll divide that by three, and that equals about 5.7. So, I'm not gonna pretend I did that in my head, I had this calculated way, way before this. So, 5.7 per pencil, which, for our, our review sheet, it gives us, um, just barely in the $1 to $5 range. It's not it's not $6 quite yet. So first we're going to go over the claims, which I'll write here in the corner. Um, it has a low center of gravity because this is the only metal part of the pencil. So basically, it's pretty heavy down here. If we, if we were to, to check the balancing, let's do it. It's very towards the, the end here. So obviously, that means that there's more details and better precision as you're writing. So that's their first selling point. Next, it says they have a lead indicator right here. Um, we'll go over that more later, but it's not very good because, as you can see, when you have a lead indicator, like the one they, they kind of tried to replicate on the Rotring 500, it has to be very stable because if I put it like this, and I know my lighting situation doesn't really permit you to see this, but it says H. And if I do this and I move the pencil around, nothing will change. It, it still says H because it's stiff. You know, I can still move it around, but it's stiff. This one, I mean, it's it's like a little fidget toy. You can you can move it around as much as you want. So I'll move. It says H B right now, and if I if I like simulate a little bit of of rumbling from you know wear and tear or just being outside or whatever and bringing it around, it changed to two B. So it would literally lie to you. So obviously not a good lead indicator, but it also has a retractable tip, as you can see, um, a replaceable eraser at the top, as we discussed earlier, a knurled copper electroplated grip. Now, we already talked about the grip and how it's the only metal part of the pencil, but electroplating is basically when you have a metal and then you put, I guess, another metal in it and then fill the, the whatever vessel it's in with water and then you put electricity in the water so that it kind of absorbs the qualities of the copper. I'm not an electroplating expert, but um, apparently it gives it corrosion resistance and anti-sliding. So, I don't know, don't take my word for it, but we'll talk more about the corrosion resistance or whatever um, it claims later. Alright, so obviously we zoomed in so you guys can see this better. And yeah, the last point I wanted to go over was the similarity between the Rotring 500, which I have right here, and a review of which will be coming out soon, and the Nick Pro. Now, obviously, the color scheme is the same with the red on black for the ink, but also I noticed that the clips are the same, as you can see. The kind of placement of this grip here is the same, as well as the, the lead mechanism, which we talked about earlier, the, the lead indicator. So I thought that was interesting. I'm not trying to say anything about like them stealing the design, but I mean, you can come to your own conclusion. I think it's, it's okay to borrow, but I just wanted to point that out. It was interesting to me. So they claim to have a specially formulated plastic body 
as well as the heavy duty kind of build to it, which I which I won't deny is there. Um, but we'll talk more. Like, there's a lot of things we're gonna talk more about, but the functionality category is when we'll we'll touch on a lot more of those points. So for comfort. It has the same issue as the other Nick Pro we reviewed last week. They sent me two packs, and last week I reviewed the MP1000. This is the 2000. It is not knurled tightly enough. So, as I said in the other video, the more tight these cir these squares are in the metal knurling, the more tactile a pencil will be. Now, this one has extremely tight squares, so it's a very tactile pencil. Now, I'm not going to compare it, and I'm not going to rate it lower because this one's more tactile. But because that one is $20 and this one's five. So it is slippery because of the the mediocre knurling. And that is that is disappointing as there are other pencils in this category with much better knurling. Now the grip is also too high. If I were to write like this, I would feel like I don't have enough control over the pencil. I'd have to hold it like this. And th at that point, I'm just not holding the grip and it defeats the purpose of having a nice grip. Um, <laughs> So, the material is pretty decent. I don't know about specially formulated plastic. I know I just used those quotation marks twice. But, um, yeah, it's, it's really just plastic. It, it does have give, as you can see, if I were to put pressure on it. But it's decent. It has some give, but it's not, a, like, bad quality. Um, and I don't, I don't think it'll break if you're putting it through normal use. Quote-unquote normal use. I just used those quotes twice. Okay. So, for comfort, we have... One out of five because I just don't think it's very well thought out. The knurling is mediocre at best. And um, yeah, I don't think it deserves anything more. It gets slippery when you write because of how not tight the knurling is. Uh, material quality, we'll give it a two out of three. So it's mid, um, but it's, it'll do the job, you know? So three out of eight. Functionality. So this next category is, is more about how the pencil works, and the first thing we're going to be talking about is the reliability and repairability. Now if we take this off, you can now see that the clutch is a triple claw brass clutch, which is normally really good quality, but in this case it did jam. Now the other Nick Pro I tried out, it jammed more. This one only jammed one time in two pages, which is still <laughs> egregious. And it's, it's just very bad. I don't think a pencil should ever jam in such a short writing session of just two pages. But that's my benchmark. So way too much jamming. It's very surprising for a, a brass clutch. You should expect more of one of those. And I was surprised that it was a brass clutch in this sort of lower price range. But my hopes were automatically crushed. So it is very repairable, as you saw, I was able to take all the components off and just look inside of it and that would be easy to find like errors or little jams that you may have found in the pencil as you're writing. So we'll give it a 2 out of 5. The brass clutch will last a while, but then again it's not the most reliable, which that's what you need in a pencil. So in erasability, we have some very weird things. Um, in this pencil or in these pencils, sorry, since there's multiple. We have this neat little thing. Now, a lot of pencils come with these plastic tubes in which they hold the extra erasers, but obviously six of them, which is fine, that's very well enough, but instead of just giving us the eraser, which we can just take out like this, it's about this big, okay? They give us the entire plastic section which is really weird because it already comes with a plastic section, so why would I need another one? So I could just take this off, put this one in, and then I would be, I would be having a good day, you know? This, this would be fine. But for some reason, they just waste a bunch of plastic and include these, which you're never really going to use unless you manage to lose this. Um, so obviously that's weird and a waste of plastic, but I don't know, I just wanted to point it out. The erasers are also very small and dry, so um, they missed out on almost every category there. It's small, dry, and a waste of plastic, so I don't know how they, they managed to do the trifecta, but yeah, it get, I'm going to give it a zero because no 
pencil should be wasting this much plastic and have an eraser that if I write something and I want to erase it, it smudges for one and you can hear from across the room because of how dry these erasers are. So definitely deserving of a zero. That's the first zero I've given on this channel. Um, I think <laughs> you can check me on that, but durability is in the next category. And I think this is where this pencil kind of shines. Because the, the construction is mediocre, it has some give as I showed before, and I've had some problems where the eraser cap just kind of comes off sometimes, which, I don't know, maybe, maybe they knew their construction was terrible, so they decided to um, include those extra eraser caps in case you lost them because of how bad they're created. But um, the retractable tip definitely helps with the wear and tear because you know the tip will never bend, which is a problem with many pencils. And it saves this pencil a little bit in terms of giving it a 2 out of 3. So it gets a 4 out of 11, and we'll move on to the next category, value for money. Now this pencil has a clip that, for some reason, can literally come off of the pencil. Um, oh, and then we got the other part to come off. So if you have it in an environment where it's not going to be rustled and tussled, it'll be fine. But for it to claim that it is a heavy duty pencil and for this to just slide around that's just not acceptable like you shouldn't be paying 5.7 dollars for something so poorly thought out it, this shouldn't be moving at all i've never seen that in a pencil and i've only seen it in these com this company's um designs which i shouldn't be seeing at all period um the lead indicator, as I said, it's a waste of time and money. I don't know why they did that if it was going to be useless. Now, if we're going to talk about the lead indicator, we might as well point out the other pencils. This one, obviously, very spinny lead indicator. You can literally hear it. But this one, it has one that stays in place, which means that this isn't really a design issue. It's a quality control issue. As you can see, it stayed in place. I just moved it a little bit on accident. But this is a quality control issue at its core. So this is even worse of a situation because not only are these very unequal in terms of their construction, but the construction is actually good, like in terms of how it's supposed to be. But it's never actually implemented the right way. So the, the materials are good, I'll give it that. The tip is retractable, which works. Um, it has a sliding sleeve mechanism, which is pretty good, and it means that when you're writing, the sleeve will come up a little bit so that you can actually use all of this lead instead of just this little bit at the top. So that's good, and I'll give it a one for both of them. It is just, this pencil struck out basically in every category. It's really disappointing, and I would be, personally, I would be upset if I paid so much for a pencil like this. Um, so 2 out of 8, 4 out of 11, and 3 out of 8, that gives us a 3 out of 10 for this pencil. That is one point lower than its counterpart, which I received, the MP1000, um, and this is my review for the Nick Pro. MP2000. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope this review gave you a good idea of what I think of it, its flaws, and just what you should stay away from in a pencil, basically. I do want to thank Nick Pro for sending it out, even if it's not the best pencil I've ever reviewed. It was nice of them to offer it and, you know, give me a little bit of recognition, as I'm not the biggest channel. There are some links in the description where you guys can, like, buy the pencil and look at their other pencils in their repertoire. But it's up to you. I personally wouldn't recommend it. But um, you make your own financial decisions. You can buy it if this is what you're looking for. If you're looking for a value pack, I mean, go for it. I mean, these are really good value pack materials. And the pencils just aren't up to my standards. But again, thank you guys for watching. And I hope you have a notable day. Bye.